Hi. So now we're going to talk about how to define data in MATLAB. So MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. And so lots of times what we're going to be doing is dealing with data that takes the form of either a large matrix or a large vector or an array, kind of a higher dimensional array of data. Okay, so we're going to talk now about how to define matrices and vectors, how to do simple things like add and multiply, how to access elements uh, of a matrix and a vector. Okay, so let's just start. Um, I'm just going to start creating matrices and then we're going to talk about uh, the various things in, in MATLAB, how these matrices are handled, how to, define, um, how to define them, how to access them, things like that. So let's say I want to define a matrix um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so in MATLAB, let's say I want to I call that matrix A. So A is a variable uh, in MATLAB's memory and it's going to be that matrix. So A equals a matrix, and you define matrices using these square brackets. Okay, so A is a matrix, and the first row, remember, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So first row, 1, 2, 3, second row, 4, 5, 6. So the first row is 1, 2, 3, no problem. And the second row is 4, 5, 6. So notice that all I did here is I put spaces between the elements in the first row, one, two, three, and then I put a semicolon inside my matrix to say, okay, that was my first row, now go to the second row, and the second row is four, five, six. And I'm gonna hit enter, I'm not gonna put a semicolon on the end of this because I want it to print to the screen so I see what it is. Okay, and when I hit enter, MATLAB says, okay, good, I've created a matrix A, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six just so, so you can check that it looks like what you thought it should look like. And if I define the same matrix, but I put a semicolon at the end of my expression and I hit enter, MATLAB will create that matrix, but it won't print it to the screen. So if you put a semicolon at the end of a, of a command, MATLAB will still execute it, but it won't print the output to the screen. Okay, so we have this matrix A that we want. It's got um, two rows and three columns. Okay, this is just a, a fine matrix. And I can do lots of things, like I can access any element of this matrix I want just by specifying its row and column position. So let's say I want, the, um, I want an element from the first row and I want the second element of the first row. So in MATLAB I say A of the first row and the second column, so first row, second column, it should return the number two. Good. Okay, so MATLAB says that the first row and second column of A is 2. If I want the second row, third column, so A of 2, 3, second row, third column, it should return 6, which is the second row, third column. And so you can access any element of your matrix you want just by specifying the row and the column in this, in this format. Okay. I can also create, uh, so let's go back up to where I defined this matrix. Okay, I could also define uh, a vector. I could say x equals the vector 1, colon, 4. And notice that because I put a colon after the 1, it says now I have a new row, so it's 1 on top of 4. Okay, a column vector 1, 4. As opposed to a row vector 1, 4, if I don't put the semicolon there. So if I have the semicolon, I get a column vector. If I don't have that semicolon inside the matrix, I get a row vector, one, four. Okay? So the semicolon tells me that I should start with a new row. So I could create a new x vector, uh, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be a tall column vector uh, with four entries, one, two, three, four. Or I could create a row vector, one, two, three, four with no semicolons. Okay. Uh, so let's go back and say x equals uh, 1, 2, 3, column vector of three elements. And remember A was a 2 by 3 matrix. So in principle, I should be able to multiply these things. Um, I should be able to multiply my, um, 
my matrix with my vectors. So let's just do this. If I had um, A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I should be able to multiply that by a column vector that's 3 tall. So my column vector x was 1, 2, 3. And the way, I'm just reminding you, the way we do this multiplication is I take this column vector and I tip it over and multiply by every single one of this first row and add all the numbers together. So I get 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3. That's 1 plus 4 plus 9. It's 14. And then I do the same thing. Uh, I take this, this column vector and I multiply it by the second row of my matrix. Uh, and I add all those numbers up. So I get 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. Okay, that's 4 plus 10 plus 18 is 32. And so the answer when I multiply this matrix by this vector is a new vector that's too tall. It's the, the number of rows and it's 14 by 32. I hope, I hope I did this right. So if in MATLAB I should be able to say A times X and it should spit out a column vector with two elements, 14 and 32. So it does exactly what you think it should do uh, based on what you know about, about matrices and vectors. And it just gives you a nice way of defining these things uh, and using them quickly in, uh, in your MATLAB environment. Okay, so the way that we defined A, I just want to go back up here uh, to how we actually defined A. Now, you can think about this in lots of different ways. I thought about this, the way I usually write these is I write the first row, semicolon, the second row, right? So I get kind of this, uh, these rows on top of each other. But you could equally well have defined this as three column vectors next to each other. So I could also say A equals a bunch of column vectors sitting next to each other. So the first column vector is one semicolon four. The next column vector is two semicolon five. And the third column vector is 3 semicolon 6. I need that to be in brackets. So basically MATLAB is saying here, I'm going to create a little column vector 1, 4, another column vector 2, 5, and a third column vector 3, 6, and they're next to each other. These are three columns of my matrix A. And if I hit enter, I get exactly the same matrix. So basically I can specify this as rows on top of each other or columns next to each other. Totally the same thing. Um, okay, good. So we know that we can access any element we like of this A matrix just by specifying the row and column. So if I want the first element, the first row, first column, it's A11. Good. But what if I want to specify the first uh, kind of two columns of the first two rows? Now this is kind of interesting. In MATLAB you can actually do this really easily. I can say A of the first two rows, one, two, and the first two columns, one, two. So I'm telling it that I want to pull out the first two, the, the first and the second row, and the first and the second column. And so this should return a two by two matrix of just the first, uh, the first two rows and first two columns. If I wanted, um, let's say I wanted the first and third columns. So I still want the first row and the second row but now I want the first and third column of A. See, now I pulled out the first column and the third column of A. And I specified that right here. I said I want the first column and the third column for both rows. Okay, and if I wanted, I could call that a new matrix B. I could say B equals the first and third column uh, of A. And now I have this new matrix B. A slightly simpler way to do it is to say B equals A of all of the rows. If, you, if I just put a colon there, it says I want all of the rows, colon, uh, the first and third column. Same thing. Lots and lots of different ways of doing the same thing in MATLAB. It's going to take a little while to get used to all of the, the lots of ways of defining vectors and matrices and you know, pulling out the first and third columns or all the rows. I mean, it takes a little while to get used to this notation. Uh, but once you do, you'll realize that having so many different ways of writing everything is very powerful. It means that there's lots of ways of programming the same concept 
and some of them are going to be faster and more flexible and more general so that you can solve you know, different problems in the future using the same methods. Um, okay, so we'll talk more about this uh, soon. Thank you.